Put the hole degreased and the uh, sealant scraped off the inside and the uh, bevel. And I put brake cleaner on the rag and degreased this inside diameter so that the uh, silicone on the seal can set up, not leak grease past it. That looks pretty good. Make sure there's no dirt on the splines. I've wiped this washer off. I've degreased the threads on this, degreased the inside of that. And it should be good to drive a new seal in there. Be sure you start to seal straight and continue to put it in straight if it gets jackknifed and put it in at an angle. It should be tossed and a new one installed. I bought uh, Ford stuff, so I'm going to be extra careful with installing it. This seal came pre lubricated. You can put a steady amount of axle grease down in the bead of it. Make sure the seal's lubed up, or you could have a problem again. And that's it. Just make sure it's down flat all the way around. Now the hard part. Clean the pinion flange up, degrease it, make sure there's no dirt in the splines. And if there's very much of a lip dug into the sealing surface for the seal, either replace it or run some 600 grit sandpaper continuously around it till you feather it a little bit. I had a little bit of a lip one. I smoothed it out some 600 grit, rotating it continuously while holding the sandpaper on it. I should smooth it out a little bit. And you can put some 75-140 synthetic axle grease on this lip before insertion. And along your match mark. And I'll be using the original nut run this flange down slowly. I've degreased the nut and these threads on this or otherwise the, the new nut Loctite won't bite on and you'll need every bit of it. Now I'm using a washer underneath of the nut because I have to have one that fits it. If you're using an old nut right against the flange I at least put some type of lubricant underneath this lip edge it's not filing too much metal off the flange. And I'm going to let this washer take the punishment. Bolt a bar on here to take the holding of the... We don't want this turning around. Watch and make sure it stays lined up with the seal back here. Keep it pulled forward and as centered as possible as you tighten it down. I want to tighten this nut down until this doesn't move anymore. And then we'll have to fine tune it for drag on the bearings. Once the nut starts approaching flush with the head of the pinion threads, be sure and start checking this regularly for looseness. If you ever do it, you have to take this sucker apart and put a new crush sleeve in there, new seal, etc. I've got the eighth inch washer under it, so it's getting pretty hard about flush. I'm just taking it easy and not tearing up the seal. You can see it's closing up the gap back here, the plastic dust shield. It's getting real close. Once it gets either about here, say there's an eighth of an inch washer underneath that, so it'll be down another eighth of an inch. You want to start turning it in eighth inch increments. The, the feeling to push it further to get it done faster is a bad thing. 
you just got to ignore it and do it just an eighth inch turn just a little little bit at a time and then once all the peckings quit you don't have to give it like a sixteenth or eighth inch turn then check the drag on it and do that multiple times till you get about 10 to 12 inch pounds of drag on used bearings new bearings are like 16 to 24 pounds inch pounds of drag but I get all this pecking out of it and I'll take that old nut off and wipe the threads off again and put the new nut on it and run it down then do the final adjustment with the new nut But don't let the backlash in the rear end trick you for making that pecking noise. You just hold it straight, but I can still feel it moving a little bit. I may put a new nut on it and run it down. I don't know. Let me check it out here. I took the nut off, and I'm going to degrease those threads again. Install the new nut. And run it down and start checking this flange for drag. I'm going to tell you right now, that nut is a pain. I've been 20 minutes just to get it down below flush with the pinion. It's still got another eighth inch to go or so. I've got three quarter inch ratchet on it, plus four foot of pipe. I raised the truck up another six inches so I can get a better swing on it. And that's something else. Sure going a lot tighter than the old nut came off. I'm down to where there's about four or five threads showing and it's real close I've loosened my tool up spin this by hand every eighth inch turn and I feel funny drag starting to get on it if you overdo it you'll have to redo this whole process again plus pull a fresh sleeve out of it a new seal etc etc so this is worthy of taking time to do it. And I keep turning it up about a sixteenth of an inch at a turn until it starts dragging a little more. About ten to twelve inch pounds. Three, five, six. Yep, I'm happy with that. I'll come around to the back side of the rear end and make sure that you wash these traps out and try not to use a, a lint covered rag to wipe anything out and wear them nitrile gloves or something. I've sprayed most of the stiction off of it, spray cleaner. And look for any lint. Lint always gets in here on this mess and as little of it as possible needs to be in it. But I need to lay a lint free rag over this ring gear and start taking a razor blade and scrape the old silicone off the face and degrease it and make sure there's no silicone back in these bolt holes with a probe of some kind or a skinny screwdriver and I've got a brand new rear differential cover to install so you don't have to worry about a rust hole popping through the old one and losing the grease out of it And get this face cleaned up. And you might look back at your ABS sensor and see if you see any big piles of metal stuck to it or anything. It'll interfere with the signal if it is. Yeah, it had you know some minor debris down these catch 
crabs, which is what they do. And I'll go ahead and clean it up some more. But once the housing's clean and degreased, I wiped it down with a brake cleaner and checked all the holes for silicone in there. If there's silicone in there, the bolt can bust the housing when it goes down. But the face is degreased and scraped off so the silicone will have a good surface to bond to to keep the grease from leaking out. And I'm a hefty coating of silicone around the face of this housing and then land the cover to it. Don't forget your metal tags goes in right in line with the axles. ID the rear end. These are pretty rusty but I'll probably paint them. Once you got the face degreased and most of the rust scraped off of it, <clears throat> put a eighth inch deep bead of silicone about half inch wide all around it. Just leave a couple of the bolt holes where you can see them to line the cover up diagonal and taper it from just inside the housing out about eighth inch deep. Pay particular tension from the middle of the axle down to the other middle of the axle that's where your sealing area is going to be and holding the grease in for the most part and stick the new cover on it make sure it's dust free and got any debris in it like a piece of rust laying in that one and uh, make sure it's about 70 degrees anyway or, or more but get it on there before it starts tacking up so it'll bond well and don't forget your ID plates. Make sure the screws are clean and silicone free. Get all your bolts put in first before pushing the silicone out from underneath the cover. That way the silicone will fill underneath the bolt heads and go spread out under the cover instead of into the bolt holes where you don't want it. Now I'm going to start tightening the top and then the bottom evenly so that the silicone will distribute evenly instead of at an angle more on the top or the bottom. I'll just just keep going diagonal until it's down about 24 foot pounds. Feel free to paint this cover, scuff up the old paint with some fine sandpaper and paint it. Or wait till the silicone sits up and degrease it and scuff it up and paint it. I'll paint those rusty head bolts with some black paint and just generally go over the cover again. But it's got a good seal when the silicone is pushed out all the way around. It's doing the same thing on the inside. I degreased uh, about a quarter inch on the inside of the house housing as well. So that the silicone can make two barriers. One on the inside and one on the face, and that'll help it last longer. Just be sure you got a solid, even beater pushing through on the outside. Be in business. Let that cure for a couple of hours before putting 90 weight in it, or overnight, it'd be even better. I'm using RTV Black. It's looking pretty good now. Person should really just undercoat the whole rear end if it's rusty like this. But a few extra layers of paint on that cover ought to make it last a little longer. I've let the silicone set up overnight pretty much. And I'm going to start filling the differential with 75140 full synthetic grease. takes the uh, mobile's got uh, 75140 and it takes about three and a half quarts so I'm gonna do that to let it soak before I start putting a dry shaft and the wheels back on it the vehicle should be on a level ground and sitting on the wheels but uh, I'll fine-tune it later 
take this fill plug loose on the driver's side. It has a magnet in it and clean it off fully. And about three and a half quarts was it level and sitting on the wheels. It should just be full to the bottom of these threads, no more or no less. And I've used the old differential cover as a drain pan for excess. Pull is when it's absolutely filled to the bottom of the threads of this hole. And it's getting pretty close. I'm going to roll the axles around one full turn to get the grease soaked in on the ring gear and into the side gears and it'll need time it may, some may go into the actual housing where it was setting for a couple days empty but it should be driven and rechecked and it should just start to drizzle out this hole that'll be full after it's at room temperature cool. I'm going to snug the drain plug down. It was full and running out. I'll let that settle and take it for a little drive and let it cool off and check it later. I went ahead and cleaned. I've wire brushed off this drive shaft mating flange and dug out the center to make sure that the companion flange will go up in it and set square. I'm going to line this match mark up with the one I made on the pinion flange and tighten the 12 point bolts down to 76 foot pounds. And I'm going to put a drop or two of blue Loctite in the, all four companion flange holes. Just squirt a little dab in all four holes. Looking good. All four bolts are down to 76 foot pounds. And now to stick the rotors and the wheels back on it. Take some brake cleaner and a wire brush and clean off that flange so there's no debris on it and it's flat. Might knock some of the rust off the back brake plate and clean the inside of the rotor and make sure there's no loose debris in it. Set a drain pan under it, hit it with some brake cleaner. And a wire brush. Installed the brake caliper. Run the caliper hanger bolts down to 140 foot pounds. You may have to tap the rotor back to get the caliper to seat against the hanger all the way. And I'll go ahead and stick the wheel back on and the lug nuts tighten down to 160 foot pounds. Be sure you pump your brake pedal up before I put it in gear or letting it off the jack stands anywhere it could roll. I'm going to take it for a little test drive and check the grease level on it after it cools off a few hours. Finish putting the hubcaps back on. Look for leaks, etc., etc.